Welcome back to Finding Gina Murray. Today we're in San Francisco International Airport. We're getting ready to board our flight to Lisbon. Our Portugal flight is on track. It's it's going ahead. We <laughs> we had a few delays, we had a few changes, but I think we're actually gonna get on the plane this time. If you're new here, I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. When we last left you, we were <laughs> having some food outdoors at, in San Francisco, trying to figure out what our next step is. And we don't know the exact next step, but we do know that we're actually going to finally get to see Lisbon after all this research, all this talking about it, and all this planning. So that's our first step, is to get over there, check it out, and uh, see what it looks like. If you haven't followed along before, or if this is your first time watching, our plan has been to relocate to Europe. And in the process of making preparations, we've also been considering the idea of potentially being digital nomads and wandering the world instead of having a home base. Right. Yeah, we've had a few different options. We've gone through all of them. You can see our other episodes. You can go to buyinggmre.com, check out the whole list and see all the different planning and all the different decisions. And we still haven't gotten anywhere with it, so stick around and watch the next few episodes because they're probably going to be a little more decisive than the last few have been. Right, for sure. So when we originally planned this trip to Portugal, it was to, with the eye to look at neighborhoods, we were going to file for a D7 visa that would allow us to then apply for a residency visa because Portugal has some pretty low barriers to entry yes. for people like us who maybe still want to be working uh, but have U.S. jobs or will be freelancing. And that's in Europe. I mean, there's other countries around the world that have even lower barriers, but we are primarily looking at a European lifestyle if we're going to settle in because the idea is not only do we want to get a residency somewhere like Portugal, uh, but we do want to travel to other European countries. We've got a whole list of things that we want to get done. So being close to those other countries is why we're doing this first trip. Originally, when we were planning this, the idea of just moving and leaving behind everything felt pretty intimidating. And so we talked about maybe just traveling with five suitcases and maybe we would still be able to have some of our stuff. But the closer we've gotten to actually moving, the idea of being able to travel around the world and not have to pay rent or a mortgage somewhere has been more and more appealing. So at this point, we are not considering Portugal as our full-time residency spot, but we don't want to take it out of the picture either because we may get there on this trip, wander about Lisbon and Porto and go, this is just incredible. I, I can't believe we wouldn't do this. So the door is still open, but primarily we want to look at how light can we be and maybe just be digital nomads and experience as many countries as we can because they're there and we just, we have an opportunity. It's been a really, really busy um, month of September for us. Uh, the first thing was, you may remember, I've been in a two and a half month trial that finally ended and uh, we found the defendant not guilty uh, by self-defense. So it was a very long trying case, but that's been behind us. But it meant that we had to cancel our original trip to right. Lisbon and that kind of took some of the wind out of our sails. And so this trip has been such a long time coming. Um, and we've had, we've had three family members come and visit us at different times. Which is great. We finally got to have people come visit us in San Francisco before we leave it, which is a good thing. Right. Well, it's kind of a shame. It, it's a shame, you know? but I'm glad we got that in there because, you know, there's nothing like visiting with family. And wherever we're going in the world, we're trying to make accommodations that we can still meet up with friends and family and still gather because that is still primary in our lives. We're, we're looking to make more connections with people. We're not looking to disconnect, it's just the opposite. Right, in fact, we have promised people we may actually see the U more often than we do currently because we won't be tied down to anything. Yeah, when so. you're working a full-time job in an expensive city like San Francisco, the travel budget's pretty small and we couldn't always get to the other places where family live. So the idea is, well, if we cut down our expenses, if we're more mobile, then we have more money and more time to go visit them. 
Right. And speaking of time, uh, my job has changed in this last month and it's pivoted twice and that's not been ideal. In fact, during this trip, I was fallen told <laughs> that, that I need to be working part of the time while I'm on vacation. So Which I didn't agree to, but I wasn't in the discussion for this. Yeah, it's definitely a buzzkill and it is also part of the reason that really moving and living in a country where maybe the work-life balance is a little bit different, especially for me, because my job has been pretty all-encompassing. Yeah, yeah. You, you are somebody that dives deep into whatever you're doing. This channel, your job, and we need to find more free time. If we're going to do the things that we want to do, experience that work-life balance that we want to experience and just be more... Uh, more influenced by our travels, by the different people we meet, by the different cultures and countries and cities. It's that's where our goal. That's where our goal lies. We've been working really hard to provide consistent content on a weekly basis, and you may have missed us for a couple of weeks. And I just want to talk about the importance of protecting mental health. Yeah, it's tricky to do a full-time job, to plan this big change of life to run not just one YouTube channel, but I also have a Whiskey Rips YouTube channel. So we're trying to do- Linked below. <laughs> linked below. But we're trying to do all that. And you know, sometimes those things just kind of collapse on me, especially. I mean, I think you've been handling it a little bit better, but there have been days, there have been weeks where it's like, I don't know if I have the time or the energy to push through all this stuff. And that's okay. You know, it's all right not to be all right because we're all just dealing with so much lately. And of course, world politics get involved too. Everywhere we're looking to move, you start to see something changing there, some crisis happening there. Italy had some changes. The UK had some changes. Portugal seems like it's doing pretty good. But you know, all those things still affect how I'm looking to live life in the future. So it affects mental health. I start worrying about that. Or I start stressing about, you know, are we doing the right thing? Are we, are we going the right place, going the right direction. My brain just loves to churn on that stuff and she has to anchor me and pull me back in sometimes. And Well, I do think that there is a tremendous amount of stress in making a decision to just turn your lives upside down, which we are doing. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like it was an easy thing to make the decision that we're going to move. But as you've seen for several episodes, where we're going and exactly when we're leaving is still a little bit up in the air for some reasons that we still can't talk about. Yeah. But, but I guess I just want to reassure you that the way it looks <laughs> on YouTube is not all the way it is in real life. And we've tried to be as transparent and talk to you through the dilemmas that we've had to encounter and the struggles and our thought processes. But just know that it's not always easy and, and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, social media presents a better picture sometimes. And like Judy said, we try to give you as much reality as possible, but we also have to edit these things down so you're not listening to us for two hours and chatter on about what's going on in our lives, man. This is just stressful. But on, on a high note, we are super excited to be going to Portugal. Yes. And so we're going to be filming from there. We're going to be doing some touristy things. Our daughter is going to be joining us for the first time. We've never traveled to Europe with her. So uh, she got there a few days before us. So she's scoping things out. Yeah. But Especially in a city that we won't be able to get to on this trip. And she's just bragging about the food, bragging about the, the climate, bragging about everything. It's like, stop, you're killing us here. We're, we're days away from you. We're not even going to the beachfront that you're going to in Lagos. So right. yeah, it's been cool. It's, it, we're excited about it. It's, it's, well, we're excited for a vacation too. I mean, when was the last vacation? March? March. Yeah, now we're in October. So it's a long time. And you were doing double duty with the jury trial and work and doing everything we're doing. This is going to be a nice change of pace. Right. So come along with us. We're excited to show you our experience in Portugal. Here we are in Porto, Portugal. And uh, we've been in Lisbon already. Our trip into Lisbon was a little tough because we had to switch flights a few weeks ago because they canceled our flight. So we ended up coming in at midnight. And really coming into any city that late at night gives you no appreciation of it. And your body's really thrown off by even the next morning because 
where are we? <laughs> we don't we don't even know what we saw when we come in out of the cab. What we did see were was a a queue of cabs. I think we waited in line for an hour. I could not believe the steady stream of cabs that there were yeah. um, to bring us to our hotel, which was a great thing, but I never in my wildest imagination expected that many cars to be there in that long you, of a line. You know when you have a queue at Disney World where they keep adding chains so you have to go through the metal back and forth? They kept adding chains. We were going through Disney, it's like, oh, we're moving fast. No, we're not. We're just further back in the queue, and they're making it longer for us to walk. It was exactly. crazy. But they kept shooting cabs at us. So great, you know, it went fast, but. I didn't enjoy arriving so late at night where you couldn't really see the city. And wasn't until we got up the next day, we had scheduled a city tour so that we could get an overview of the city, which is really one of my favorite ways to kind of get my bearings around a city. Yeah, it's touristy, but get the highlights, learn a little bit about the history and the architecture. And just and find your way around a few of the main streets. That's really the tricky part of most cities. Yes, that, that, that went really well. I think we both enjoyed it and got yeah. a lot out of it. It was a little hard to get to the meeting spot because it was up on a hill. We didn't know there was a trick to get up the hill with an elevator. But, you know, once we got up there, it's like, it was very nice. He's like, take a moment, you know, chill here for a second, then we'll start. We'll do a deep dive of our trip to Lisbon and Cash Cash as well as Porto in a future episode. Right, and you'll probably see some B-roll floating by in some of these little talks. So this was really exciting. This is the first time our daughter's been to Europe and traveling with her was really cool. She went to Spain first and then she went to Lagos, and Portugal, and then she met up with us in Lisbon. The idea of having someone else along on a trip is exciting because you get to kind of share your experiences and show off, but there's also the, as she put it, the negotiation. You know, when you're traveling alone, she said, it's really nice, you decide to do this, you want to go get some food, you want to do that. There's no talking to anybody else, you just go do it. Even Judy and I kind of have a, a language over the years from seeing that the other one needs some food or take a break. But when you're with someone that you're traveling with new, it's not that same thing. So we found ourselves maybe a little bit uh, awkward at moments trying to figure out, well, let's go do this, let's go do that. And then there's the whatever, whatever anybody wants, let's just go do it. It definitely was us learning to negotiate a bit more and and communicate better yeah. so that everybody was on the same page, got to see and do what they each wanted to do. Yeah. I think this trip has been a little bit more stressful than normal trips usually are. I think in part because we left a very stressful situation coming from San Francisco and I have to be working as well as taking a vacation. Which caused tension among the group because we wanted to go do something and you had to finish one more thing. Always painful when you're on vacation. And and it wasn't fun for anybody, including me, to have to be doing the work. But I also feel like everything we're viewing is through a lens of doing this full time and how does it feel? And I know when we travel, you know, maybe on day eight, maybe 10, I don't know. At some point we get on each other's nerves. And I feel like that happened maybe a little bit sooner than I think we expected. And we've just really had to be kind and gentle with one another. I feel like there's been just a lot riding on this trip that makes it feel less vacation-y and a little bit more work. We didn't take the time to reset before we took this trip. We had guests, we had events going on, we had your birthday, we had all the activities around that. Everything that was happening right before we left, plus having to figure out you know, where we're meeting Meg and everything else, everything didn't let us pause and reset and take a trip. We went right into chaos, 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 rush, 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 into a trip. Part of what contributed to my stress that I think everybody else felt as well was the fact that I was having to work at the airport and I was trying to get online on a plane and we were having connectivity issues and it just all meant that at 2 a.m. instead of getting some sleep to get up the next morning, I was continuing to work and I don't recommend that at all. But that's also, again, part of why we're wanting to have this adjustment in our lives so that uh, work doesn't have such a high priority in our lives. Yeah, balance needs to be there. We're not getting that 
at this point in our lives, which is part of the reason for everything we're changing, is to try to find that balance and to explore new things without having to have that overhead of you're on vacation only. You know, this is part of our lifestyle now. We're exploring, we're doing new things, we're finding out about new places, new people, and that's the mode we're in. It's just hard to get to that mode while you still have a job that's really caving in and we don't know where we're going yet. Right, and and again, we're planning to still work in some oh, yeah. Yeah. capacity. It just is going to look different. This reset is something we really need. <laughs> Normally, when we go on a trip, I like to know what I'm going to do, and I don't mind being spontaneous. As long as she's I... planned it. <laughs> well, I, I guess I feel like we've been saying over and over again, life is really short, so you want to seize the day. What about that scene in Notting Hill that you love, where at the end, Hugh Grant's sitting on a bench reading a book, Julia Roberts is laying there on, with her head in his lap, obviously pregnant, just enjoying the kids playing around her and the activities in the park. And to me, that is seizing the day. That is seizing the moment. I'm not sure that's your way of seizing the day or seizing the moment right now. I'm asking, is that possible to get there? Because I look forward to being in a place and absorbing a place without having an agenda to know more about a place or see more of a place. Like being in a park here and just having a little cafe behind us and kids playing uh, soccer over here the ball almost hitting us, <laughs> is an experience that I'm enjoying. And I have no problem with that. I, I like that image, but I think that it's like, let's go in the park and let's hang out. Uh, but today so far, we've just been wandering around the streets and I think it's been interesting, but I don't know what part of the city I'm in. I don't know anything about the city. And I'd like to be researching and understand a little bit more of where I'm walking, where it feels more intentional. And I'm okay wandering and getting lost. <laughs> you know, I don't mind that. It's like, oh yeah, we went too far. We, we, we obviously went down a street that was very pretty, had a lot of cool little architecture, a lot of nice uh, shops. And then it didn't. <laughs> then it got into like an outskirts of the city. We weren't in Centro Historico anymore. It was definitely not a place we'd hang out. So we had to turn around and I'm okay with that. You know, it was a half an hour, probably longer than we needed to be wandering. But how do you know? Sure, so I'm working on trying to get past the idea of feeling like I have to suck the marrow out of this trip and get so much out of it that I've seen everything I want to see as though I'm never coming back. Yeah. Uh, where slow travel, where we can spend eight weeks somewhere or six weeks somewhere and we can slow down our pace and we can just really just enjoy the day to day living in another culture and experiencing everything around us. And I am really looking forward to that, but this has been a trip that's worked different than any other type of trip we've had in the past. So here we are in our Porto Hotel on the rooftop terrace. We thought you'd enjoy the backdrop scenery that we've been enjoying. The river is lovely and the bridges are lovely. We talked about loving bridges, right? Yeah, absolutely. And all of the connections that they create for us. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, talking about this trip to Portugal, before we even left, when we were in the airport, I talked about not feeling like this was our destination, but I wanted to give it a good solid chance. And I think we still need to give it a little bit more time, but it so far hasn't grabbed me. It's, it's like kind of there in some aspects and some of the areas we've been in have been, oh, that's cool. But overall, I'm not feeling drawn to it yet. What do you think? I, I feel the same. In March, when we took our trip to see our favorite places, in Italy and we locked in on Verona. We knew exactly what we were looking for in Italy and we found it. And I feel like maybe in some ways it's like a wedding dress. And you know, you find the right one and you just know when it's it. And so maybe that's, I don't know, us being at a place where we're realizing that maybe we're not supposed to be finding the place. And maybe Portugal isn't it for us to have this be our forever home or even our two-year home. Right. But I think that maybe we can look at it for what it is and appreciate it for being Portugal and being Lisbon and Porto and Cash Cash as opposed to 
can we see ourselves living here? Because I don't know that we can, but once we let go of that, we have the ability to really just appreciate it for what it is. And I think that's part of it. You know, we had found some places like Verona that felt like instant home. This would be really cool to live in. I could see myself there. And maybe because we've had that experience and seen that, yeah. we're comparing it, or at least I'm comparing everything against it. And maybe I need to stop because <laughs> we're not going to be living in Italy as a resident for two or three years at the earliest. So that's just not going to happen. And I need to dial back on that and maybe open up more to whatever we experience, whatever place we are, and treat it as this is a cool experience, not as would we live here. So not really having a chance to get super excited and look forward to in, and, and not be able to maybe anticipate specific places in Lisbon and Porto has done, we've done a disservice to the country. And I think that that's okay because I think it is, again, following the signs. And maybe there were bigger reasons that, that those things happened the way they did. And to be fair, this is our first time in Portugal. You know, we've been to Italy multiple times. We've been to London multiple times. We've been to other places like Paris multiple times. You know, we have that return experience. And this has really been hurry up and visit some places, uh, get together with our daughter, make sure she has a good experience. And we really maybe need to give it another second try, a third try before we decide that, yeah, we, we hadn't ticked off all the boxes. Well. We barely gave it a chance to tick off any box here. Because there is still this whole point about just wandering the globe that is tugging at our heartstrings as yeah. well. And it's hard to know if it's because that is really pulling us or that we just need more time here. Certainly because we have just haven't had a chance to really decompress. Uh, we haven't been in the right headspace to fully appreciate it the way we wish we could. Yeah, I think I was looking for a vacation. <laughs> and, and it still hasn't happened yet. Still, we've been kind of working <laughs> and working and working and <laughs> thinking about working. So here we are back in Lisbon and we were recording in Porto on the top of our hotel. Rooftop. When we had ambulance noises, kind of breaking up the audio so said stop let's let's hold up wait for them to go by well they didn't go by not at all in fact they actually stopped and it turned out that there was a terrible accident and someone had drowned and so they were there for the rest of the evening so yeah. we felt like it was completely inappropriate to be recording anything or doing anything like that so we brought you back to Lisbon with us. Maybe a bit representative of things just not going according to the way we had planned this trip to go. Everything has its place in its time and that was not the time for us to do the recording. So we are back our last day actually in Lisbon. We fly out tomorrow morning very early. So we're trying to wrap this video up while we're still here. We hope if you haven't already that you'll consider subscribing so you don't miss any episodes. And if you enjoy this video, give us a like. And you can also watch the video right here. There's a lot more cool content. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Until next time. KS, 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 rush, 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 into a trip. And what then. What is KS? Chaos. Oh. oh. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I don't know. We'll get her, we'll get her hearing checked. This will be fine. <laughs> I think it might have been okay had there <laughs> so close. So close. <laughs>